Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. Today, let's not get musical, but visual. We're talking album covers because apparently Billboard over here uh, assembled a 100 best album covers of all time list. I mean, there's some pretty amazing album covers out there. Um, let's uh, see if any of them make this list. Okay, okay let's, let's go. go. Um, Okay. Honestly, I'm not familiar with this cover, but I like it a lot. The kaleidoscopic alignment of photos, the color scheme, the titling, uh, the very uh, uh, regal and uh, artsy little, you know, sort of like gold bar boxing out uh, everything in the center. Uh, it's uh, nice and symmetrical. I like it. It's a cool album cover. Beyonce, Lemonade. Solid cover. Uh, I've always liked this cover. Is it one of the greatest I've ever seen? I don't know about that, but, uh, you know, I, I do like the photo. I do like, uh, again, color palette. It is also a mysterious pose that kind of lures you in, makes you wonder about why Bay is, is looking frustrated, arm over head, leaning down. What feelings is she full of? Okay, uh, this, I would actually say, very mediocre cover. Not a good cover at all. I do think this is a pretty good album from Ariana. You know, uh, no, no shade on the music. Did I say Rihanna? I didn't mean to. I do think this is a pretty good album from Ariana. <laughs> but literally just an upside down photo of Ariana Grande is not interesting. This is a very, very uninteresting cover. Why it made this list, I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. This is a 100 greatest album covers of all time list. And uh, d d look, there are a lot of album covers, a lot of album covers, a lot of great, crazy, insane, and creative bits of cover art out there. And we're going to go with some like plain, wispy, boring font and uh, just three people wearing dresses in the woods and looking up to the sky, that's it. It's not even an impressive photo. Like for sure there are worse album covers, but like it's not at the level of creativity and pizzazz I would hope an album cover would be at to land in the top 100 of all time. It's not looking good. I like this cover as well. I think ASAP Rocky's uh, mixtape cover before this is a bit more interesting and evocative and it mostly is just kind of like a play on this to begin with. Okay, this, what, what is this? What, what is, is this? This is not interesting in any way. What, is it, are, are we just in some kind of like Cuban bar or something and dudes are just drinking martinis and we're gonna have some jazz up on the stage. Not a good cover. Uh, Fela Kuti has some pretty dope covers, I will agree, but I don't think this is one of the strongest. This one is kind of a mess. Okay, um, how? No <laughs> shade against Roberta Flack, for, the, for sure. But like, one of the greatest album covers of all time? Are you kidding me? I mean, first off, it's not a very good photo and it's not a very good color palette either. And her next two records, Quiet Fire and Chapter Two, have much more evocative and just better photos. This I could see a bit more. It's, uh, you know, in an interesting, intimate, little candid, and this is a classic record with a pretty iconic cover. Again, I will say and advocate for there being uh, much better covers out there, especially in the singer-songwriter sphere, uh, Joni Mitchell's Blue, for example. Um, but uh, I suppose this can uh, be on the list. Now, I mean, I do like what this cover adds in terms of like, you know, I guess the social commentary of Lizzo presenting herself like this and then also kind of like making a statement about uh, kind of the intimacy of the record generally. But like one of the greatest covers of all time, I, I don't I don't know. You know, I, I just feel like there's so many album covers and we're yet to hit one that uh, is a personal favorite or is just, you know, mind blowing. I do like the Igor cover. I do like the Igor cover. I mean, if you, you know, were making a list like uh, I 
see this one is where it has kind of a recency bias to it. Uh, I think Igor should, you know, be in the mix. It's got a, you know, an interesting color palette, interesting photo of Tyler. And it, and it definitely was a striking uh, cover for him when it, uh, when it dropped. It drew a lot of people to the album for sure. Couldn't we just swap this out for like, you know, the Harry's House album cover because we're getting similar vibes here and that one's more interesting. Why is Under Construction in here? Like, how is this better than her debut or The Real World? I actually think her looks and outfits on those covers are a lot more interesting. Plus there's better typography. What are we basing this on? Um, not the best Prince album cover, but, um, you know, it, it is, a. Uh definitely a striking one. I love a good black and white album cover as uh, some people who follow me know. You know, I'm not familiar with this cover, but uh, it's cute. I actually like this one. Love the outline, love the uh, theater presentation, love the background mural, uh, love the visual of Emmy Lou right there in the middle. I think this is a, a good cover, an iconic cover that like, you know, I know and love, no, but it's a decent one. Okay. Now this, this is like the first, wow, game changer album cover we've seen in, some, in this entire list so far. How has it taken us until 81 to get to a cover of this magnitude? And honestly, 81's kind of underrating it. This is possibly the most iconic funk album cover of all time ever. And it's at 81. And, and again, with a list of 100, this should be all killer, no filler. No, no, absolutely not. No. No, not this either. No, uh, please, Jesus Christ, no. The album cover is maybe the worst thing about this record because visually, this is tacky. This is cute, but I'm not buying it. Okay, dope, dope. This is surreal. This is interesting. Why are we not getting more great deep cuts like this? Because most of everything so far, mid. This, great. But honestly, like, you know, this kind of goes back to the ASAP Rocky thing. He was like, obviously pulling from this as a point of inspiration. Why didn't we go just straight to this? Not a super stunning cover again. I mean, it's a great photo of Whitney. It's also attached to a classic album, but is it like, you know, uh, uh mind blowing conceptually as an album cover? Uh, no, it's just got this dated eighties ass font with a photo of the artist in the middle not cropped or presented in a particularly interesting way. It's a decent photo, but is it like, you know, doing anything other than just laying there in the middle of the cover? Not really. It's giving high school portrait in a way. No, absolutely no. What is this? No, this is not an interesting or a flattering album cover by any means. This is actually kind of hideous. This is a mess in any and all directions, I don't want to look at this. This is a traffic jam. Okay, you know, iconic cover. Maybe it wouldn't make it into my top 100, but I could see it in somebody else's top 100. Uh, maybe 69 is a little high considering freaking uh, Funkadelic is underneath this. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is uh, one of the most memorable pop punk album covers of all time. Uh, I actually do like the Rihanna anti uh, cover a lot. There's a lot of layers to this cover. I do think it is a great cover, even if I'm not like the biggest fan of the album itself. It's an amazing cover. Uh, really good cover, classic cover. I actually respect this one quite a bit. I think that's an amazing photo of Janet. Uh, love the outfit, love the typography, love the you know uh, black and white uh, grading. It's very dramatic. It's very slay. I actually like this one quite a bit. Uh, this is a good cover too. There's a lot of layers and a lot of inferences you know, to... Uh, this in terms of like the posing and the uh, other, other, the hang, the hangy dangly bits. Anyway, no, absolutely not. Positively not. Are you joking? Not that less can't be more. It certainly can, but there are more interesting album covers than this. You know, this is a very good one. As far as modern album covers go, this one's pretty sick. And I do think it is, yeah, it's, it's Young Thug's best uh, album cover. It's a great photo and also very mysterious. Actually based thinking of this project, what it represented, um, you know, what happened to John when this album came out, like this was quite the move, quite the statement uh, for Yoko to go with this. Uh, I wish that there were actually more covers in the mix here that kind of, you know, went out of their way to make some kind of statement. This is a heavy one. This is a heavy one. And honestly, if you were going to throw it in here, which I could understand some people not going for this because of, you know, oh, taste and so on and so forth. Uh, if you're going to throw this in here, it should be higher. I have nothing to say about this, honestly. Um, okay. 
All right, finally, a really good one. A real good one. Definitely one of the best, like, band photo in center covers of all time. Uh, just because of how, like, preposterous it is and how much is kind of going on. I'm not really crazy about this cover, honestly. It is one of Lana's best albums, uh, but, like, the random dude, the way she's reaching, the neon green top is horrible. And on top of that, like... I've always thought the typography going on here with the, the, you know, the LDR and the NFR is terrible. It's like something out of a fucking comic book. At least you guys know that I don't take points off for uh, album covers. Okay, actually, uh, uh, another killer album cover. And, uh, you know, this, this one is like uh, uh, stunning, obviously, for the visual itself, for the social commentary that obviously comes along with it. To be frank, it should be way, 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 way higher on the list. And uh, look, there are lots of amazing album covers that are close to this level. And they're not really making the cut on this list. I don't know what is going on. Why, why is there so much mid in the list? Um, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to go with pass on this. This is like if uh, Lisa Frank was on LSD and just sort of like violently threw up everywhere. Okay, you know, killer cover, really good classic cover. Um, don't know why we're not seeing more of this in the list. Immaculate cover, immaculate photo. Sophie looks otherworldly. Glad it's in the mix here. The background, the body of a uh, Liquid, the strange plastic dress and the way it's hanging off of her, the gloves. There is so much to like about this cover. Visually, it's great and odd and, uh, you know, quite uh, uh, enchanting. Pretty classic cover. I like this one. I don't know if I would put it in my top 50, but uh, certainly a good one for sure. Also love this one quite a bit. I mean, Rosalia looks absolutely heavenly on this cover, like a musical deity of sorts. I, I love the uh, gold ring. I love the bird behind her. I love, uh, actually, the more that I look at it, the more it looks like a shower curtain is hanging off of her. Grace Jones was always next level in terms of the visuals and the aesthetic presentation. And uh, that is no less the case here. Wait a second, how is this landing higher than Maggot Brain? Aladdin Sane, David Bowie. I feel like this makes sense. This is a pretty stunning look for uh, Bowie, one that has been repeated over and over and over again. Uh, maybe there are other covers uh, that some might prefer over this, but uh, this one's uh, uh, certainly an iconic one and worthy of being in the top 25. Yeah, I, I suppose. I mean, I, I feel like this one is more iconic for, you know, just the way the vinyl was printed, like with the zipper and everything when it originally came out. I feel like, you know, British invasion bands had stronger showings than uh, than what we're getting here on Sticky Fingers, but I guess it is what it is. Okay, now this one's great. This one's amazing. This one is a real surreal, insane, beautiful, gorgeous acid trip. Uh, and actually just looking at the front cover doesn't do the entirety of this cover arts justice. You really have to like, you know, be able to see the back, see the gatefold and everything like that. When you can really take all of that in, uh, Bitches Brew is an incredible visual experience as far as cover art goes. No, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Like I've always thought this Duran Duran cover was ugly, not a flattering illustration. The weird lines and strings are so tacky and just like really truly dated 80s shit. I know we see it on this album cover and we're like, ooh, this is an album cover, ooh, ooh. Like if you saw this, you know, little like painting here, this visual of this woman sitting in a frame in a Goodwill, you wouldn't pay it not another fucking second. You, you, you walk by it, you completely ignore it because it's not a great illustration. If you did actually buy it and hang it up in your place, you would probably do it just ironically. Here's an iconic visual for an album cover. Now we're cooking with gas, okay? This, this thing is like one of the most memorable and uh, visually simple, but striking covers of all time. Here we go. Should be in the top 10, frankly. Okay, finally, finally, we got the freaking London Calling cover. I mean, we, we, we were going to see it eventually, I suppose. Okay, Two Pimp, A Butterfly, incredible cover. Glad it's here. Okay, this one's a classic. This one is uh, obviously memorable for a million and one reasons. What is the deal here with like being like, oh, we're going to be like really cheeky and different from everybody by putting hold just a little bit above Nirvana to ultimately make what point I I don't know because nobody is, you know, uh, remembering this over the Nevermind baby. This is so transparent. Let's just kind of do this like whole to Nirvana 
side to side comparison uh, just to get people to react to it. And it's silly. I think this one, it could be a little bit lower, but it, it didn't need to be here. The typography, the everything, the fact that they're rocking the parental advisory sticker, like harder than anybody else was during that time. They wanted you to know moms and dads don't want you to hear this one, guys. No, this is not a great cover. This one's kind of dated, unfortunately. Iconic cover, totally valid. I, I feel like I could look at this cover all day and just never get sick of it. In fact, I never do every single time it turns up and uh, actually uh, kind of a fun number one pick. I will give it that. But like no Beastie Boys. Also, Dr. Dre's The Chronic. I, I feel like that's kind of a stronger album cover overall than like, you know, straight out of Compton, maybe. Not that you had to pick one or the other because there was so much trash on the front end of the whole thing. No Bjork. So many classics from the indie scene as well. Also in the court of the Crimson King, Trout Mask Replica. And look, this is just like tip of the iceberg type stuff that I'm talking about here. I could probably go on for another hour and I don't think Austin wants me to go on for another hour, just like listing off album covers. There's just so much filler on this entire list and I just don't get why. I mean, the most valid picks were among some of the most obvious and, uh, you know, had to be there. And that's just sort of like, what makes this list such a massive disappointment. Because again, the picks that made the most sense were the ones that people mostly like because the internet tells them that they're good. And then beyond that, most of the other picks were not interesting visually or uh, a fair or I guess gripping presentation of uh, modern or groundbreaking art, just super plain, boring stuff like uh, Beyonce's name in pink in the center of the cover. Those are my thoughts. I'm going to leave it there. This list was terrible. This was a very, very awful list, I must say. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, album covers of all time of forever.